Hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to be able to talk to you through this video where I'm going to give um, some tips for students or people without much job experience on how they can make the most of the LinkedIn social network um, to help advance their career and really give themselves a great showcase of what they can do and who they are in a public but professional sense. So I'm going to be taking you through a uh, some lots of different tips today. I'm just going to bring the slides up now. So what we're going to do today is go through the following three parts. I'm going to tell you a bit about LinkedIn, and what it is and why it's useful to have a profile on there. I'm also then going to take you through the top steps of things that you have to have on your LinkedIn profile to get the the most views and to really make sure it's complete and showing a good picture of who you are and then finally we'll talk about a few hints and tips on how you can grow your network and make the most out of the service but to start off i will tell you a bit about me and why i kind of talk about this topic so i actually had a really interesting uh, change of my career because of my social networking and it all started with a fun little app called Foursquare, which was used for checking into places. And uh, it's now being rebranded as Swarm, but it's similar to other check-in apps. Maybe you've checked in somewhere on Facebook to a movie or a place that you've been to. So I was a bit addicted to this when I was a bit younger and would check into everywhere that I would go to. Uh, one of those places was if I was ever at uh, my local train station, I'd check in there. And when you got the most check ins out of everyone, you became the mayor of that um, location. So I became the mayor of Bedford train station and it tells you who you've knocked off the leader post. And in that message, I could see that, that person was on Twitter and I was also on Twitter. So I thought I'll give him a little jokey taunt on Twitter to say, ha ha, I'm now the mayor. And um, he kind of liked it and replied back. And then we noticed that we were both in the same kind of IT industry. So we ended up following each other on Twitter and um, he then kind of had that connection and we knew each other a bit as much as you can ever kind of get to know someone at that level. Um, what I didn't realise was that he would kind of looked at my Twitter profile and saw that I had a blog on WordPress and that's where I went to kind of post about stuff I was doing and the uh, kind of problems I encountered in my IT roles and how I might have fixed or resolved them. Um, and then he could also from there see a link to my LinkedIn profile. And he actually worked in the IT department at LinkedIn in their London offices. And when it came uh, to them needing a new team member, he thought, I know exactly uh, the kind of person that I want to refer for it. Um, and he put my name forward and ended up working there. And I got to work um, for the LinkedIn Global Corp IT team for a number of years um, when I was kind of at a really um, early stage in my career. So I didn't ever have to once give my CV for that job. Um, it was just all done through uh, the LinkedIn profile and um, it was quite a, uh, a nice example of how just uh, doing small things having a public presence can really help uh, show some opportunities that would have never been available to me. I wouldn't have even thought about uh, necessarily. So let's talk a bit about what LinkedIn is. So I think probably some people watching this may already have a profile or they've heard of it, but never really used it. Um, and, you know, that's quite common, especially if you haven't got a, a big kind of job history already. So LinkedIn is a place for uh, professionals to socially network with each other. And they might come there not just to find a job, but to also develop their career a bit, help kind of show who they are as a person so people can go and find them the jobs rather than them having to do all the seeking. And to also keep in touch with the industry and build up the knowledge of the um, place that, where they might want to work or any kind of skills that they have um, or maybe kind of publish and showcase exactly uh, some of their own knowledge. Um, 
things like a traditional job board website that uh, you might have had to go to um, only really have about 20 percent of people that would actively look for roles whereas LinkedIn's great for kind of recruiters and companies to find people because um, it's kind of open to everyone, not just those who are actively seeking a role. LinkedIn has got uh, really large user bases. It's one of the kind of biggest social networks out there. Um, you can see from that map there out there's 740 million members worldwide. There's 30 million in the UK and uh, millions all across Europe and the world and it roughly gets about two new members a second. So that global pool of talent is always growing, always getting bigger. There's more than 40 million open jobs on LinkedIn. There's 90,000 schools and colleges listed, um, and it really opens you up to the whole world. And the key reason people find LinkedIn valuable is because it helps find those passive candidates for new roles. So um like i said in the slide before only about kind of 30 percent might be actively looking for a job whereas 70 percent are just using the platform they're posting updates they're updating their profile with the latest certification that they've got or exam they've passed um, and they're just on there using it um, and getting their own benefit from it so when a job opportunity does come up it's there, it's easy to apply for, and people can uh, really find you there easily. So how do you get started? How do you go from being a student to being a rising star of the industry that you're interested in? So you do this by setting up your profile. Now, when you sign up for LinkedIn, um, if you just skipped past and put in the bare minimum of all of the information, you would get a pretty dull default profile. Uh, so this is an example of a profile that would not get many views and unlikely to get any connections, I think, apart from maybe a few spam bots or desperate recruiters. So I'll show you what you can do to use the full feature set on there and really make your profile rock. The first section you have to fill out is your name and a headline. So with your name, you want that to be literally just your name. Don't put anything um, kind of any keywords in there or say looking for work or anything like that, because that actually makes you not show up in search results properly. Um, where you do put that information is in your headline. This should be a really kind of catchy and keyword rich headline. It's that uh, slogan that's that one professional fact that you want people to know about you. The headline could describe what you're doing now and where you see yourself going in the future. Uh, so, for example, you could say I'm an engineering student excited about tech opportunities. A, another thing you can do is customize the URL that you get. So when you first sign up for the profile, you'll get kind of a long, hard to remember um, URL for the website address or where people can find your profile. You can actually tweak that so it's something a lot more simpler, easy for you to remember, or something you can put on your CV or at the bottom of your emails to help people find you when they're not on the website. Now, the next element, um, and it's kind of second most important uh, feature that you can have, is to have a really good photo. So uh, some people are a bit embarrassed about photos, don't know what to put. They don't think they've got one that looks professional enough, but actually you don't want something that looks overly professional, something like a wedding photo where you're in a kind of full suit and tie or something like that um, actually um, isn't how people dress normally in the workplace or it is, but only in particular roles. And you want to have a photo that has got that good balance of being personable um, to being professional. Um, you want to use most of the frame, so just have a good head and shoulders shot. Don't have one with lots of busy things in the background or your pet on the side or half the body of someone else from an old photo that you found. Um, you want to make it really clear and obvious um, 
who you are so you're actually recognizable if you do maybe get an interview with someone or you meet someone the first time and they've looked at your profile they'll be able to kind of recognize you and make that connection if you have a good photo on your profile then you actually get 14 times more profile views uh, which is really great um, if you ever search for someone on LinkedIn and you've seen that they haven't got a picture there then you kind of don't trust that it's maybe the right person or there might be 10 people with the same name and you haven't got a clue kind of where to start clicking and uh, then you never end up clicking on that profile because it's too hard to find um got a few selection of photos here so uh, you can see in the top left exactly kind of what happens if you don't have a photo very dull very generic um and these other photos of people um, that i know or i work with at visual um, and it shows you a bit of the variety about what people put on there and you can kind of see and recognize the ones that actually you think are a good example so there's ones that are kind of clear photos head and shoulders they kind of really stand out draw your eye um, for the right reasons and you think oh yeah i'd recognize that person if i saw them other ones that have maybe got strange filters on or uh, you can see someone's got kind of half of someone else in the photo or a uh, picture from their holiday um, it's just looks like you haven't put in any effort there for that photo um, and it's not difficult to ask one of your friends or someone you live with to take a photo on your phone against a nice clean background and have that there looking kind of relaxed um, but professional So after you've done those key bits of your, your name headline in your photo, you start to talk a bit more about who you are. And that's uh, background that you give yourself is in the summary section. So you want to make your summary keyword rich so you'll be found in searches, but make sure that it sounds natural. So talk in a kind of a natural way. Don't try to sound too clever. You want to keep it in that first person narrative to make it sound human. You can enrich that summary with um, photos or videos to help it stand out more or kind of give examples of uh, what you're talking about in the summary. And you can describe about the skills you have and your experience, um, but also what your future goals are and where you want to head in your career. You can get creative here. This is your biggest opportunity for showcasing your personality. So you can include things like hobbies or interests and just really make sure that you write in your own tone of voice. Uh, here's a good example, um, just as a, a silly little uh, thing of um, who has got a good descriptive summer example. So this person saying with over 155 careers and counting, there isn't a plastic ceiling I haven't broken. From mermaid to movie star, fashionista to fairy princess, I continue to inspire girls to be anything. Um, so you might be thinking, who on earth has written something like that? Well, that's actually Barbie's profile on uh, on there, but a really good example of someone who's uh, really sold themselves in their summary and given a bit of information about what they've done. The next section you do is your experience. So this is talking about job experience, which is always tricky if you've never even had any work before or you've only done kind of small jobs so it is important even if you've just worked in a supermarket or you've worked for maybe a neighbor um, or someone to do a bit of gardening for them or help them out you can list that on there um, show the, the kind of work that you have done um, just to show people that you have been employed um, you know any job role you do shows that you've got um, a bit of experience and uh, you haven't been waiting till you complete school to even think about working. You can include any kind of uh, work experience uh, like you might be doing now at Ritual. Um, and you can include internships, summer jobs, anything part time and even unpaid work as well. The key here is to be precise in your past experiences so you can uh, put lots of detail to make it relevant to the people that might be looking at it and try and draw out the things that you think might be useful um, to the person that you would want to read your profile. For example, if you um, worked on a checkout in a supermarket, you might want to say that 
uh, this is where you learn customer service skills rather than just something factual like I bagged up groceries all day. Um, it's a good idea to use bullet points to keep things nice and succinct um, rather than running over text, which is quite hard to read and for people to pull out the important bits. Uh, one thing to avoid is using buzzwords. So um, that's things like saying that you're creative and motivated and a really driven person with a proven track record. Those kind of buzzwords um, uh, are so common, they actually don't make you stand out. Um, and it's better to actually show why you think you're like that if you think it's true um, with good examples or things like those videos linked or pictures or articles um, added as part of that. Uh, just like you can do with the summary section, you can do that per job role as well. Another thing to really kind of prove that you have got the experience that you're talking about is uh, to ask recommendations from people. So uh, when you add a job, you can ask people who worked at the same place as you to recommend you. And that could just be a small paragraph saying about what they found it like working with you and how uh, they kind of agree that you've got those important skills and really kind of highlight pick people that you know are going to give you a really good recommendation. Finally, if you have specifically done volunteer experience for a charity, there's uh, its own section for that on your LinkedIn profile where you can add kind of maybe fundraisers you've done or other volunteer work. Um, it's really good uh, to add that volunteer experience and um, employers like to see that, um, you know, there's something more to you than just your your day to day job and you have interests in helping others. Um, as part of your kind of social responsibility. So education is where you should be able to put something. Uh, you don't need to include, uh, say, your primary school, uh, but your, your secondary or upper school are good to list. Um, you can put on what certifications that you have earned. Again, if you um, Got some really good results that you're really proud of and maybe not some other good results in other areas don't feel like you have to put everything on there but put the the grades and the qualifications that um, you think are important for people to know about and uh, you can be kind of proud and showcasing them there on your profile as you move maybe through college or do a part-time course or even go to university or do an apprenticeship and you can add that into your education too and uh, in fact uh, members with a school tagged on their profile get on average 10 times more views for their profiles so that's another important piece to have on there so as we said earlier there might not be much that you can put in terms of actual job or work experience so far but something you can fill out are any accomplishments so these can be a number of things. You can see the categories there. We've got projects, courses, honours and awards, um, maybe a test score or an organisation that you've joined. Um, this way you can highlight things that maybe didn't have a formal um, exam at the end of it, um, but it's something that you achieved and it helps to show who you are. The project section really is quite useful because you can put anything on there, um, maybe a really good bit of coursework or research that you did in school, um, why not list that as a project? Say you're doing a computing course and you listed that in your education, that doesn't necessarily tell you about, you know, what tasks you did there, what you were capable of doing. You might have designed a really good website as uh, part of a project at school. So you can list that there so people get a bit more information about um, exactly what you are and who, you, what skills you have. A third of hiring managers are really interested in seeing hobbies and extracurricular interests and to get a full kind of rounded sense of the person that you are. So uh, really important that you list some of those on there. The skills are a kind of newish feature of LinkedIn where you can say uh, specific skills that you've got again doesn't have to be something that you've got uh, an exam in, but it's something that you are well-skilled at. Maybe it was a hobby that you got really into or 
um, something that you have kind of learnt um, as you've grown older and you can list that as a skill. Uh, maybe you're thinking a skill could be something that um, you know people come to you for, for your advice on because they know that you're that subject matter expert uh, or you've got something kind of uh, worth knowing or sharing about there. Skills are really um, help increase your chance of getting your profile viewed. Um, you can see there you get 13 times more views by listing skills. You should aim to at least have five, but you can list uh, quite a lot. Um, and then once you've listed those skills, you can ask people to endorse them. Now, people might endorse them anyway if they're just looking at your profile and know who you are. But you can ask people in your network that you trust um, to boost your kind of skill rankings um, by endorsing them. And that's a bit simpler than kind of having to write a proper uh, referral maybe for a job that you've done because people just simply click the button, plus button next to the skill they can put a bit of information about how they know you have that skill but then you might have say uh, 20 people have endorsed you for your skills in Microsoft Excel um, so that's really good that's something that you want to kind of show off on your um, profile page and then that will show up as one of your top skills and that you know, other people really think you have that you don't just have to have hard skills like that kind of uh, Excel skill, but you can also list soft skills on there as well because they're really important um, to show people and to get endorsements on. So soft skills might be things like time management or leadership. Um, so don't forget to list them as well. Once you've um, put all your information on there, you will start to make connections with other people and your connections are listed publicly on your profile. If you have a public profile, there are lots of privacy settings that you can tweak and refine um, to make sure that only maybe people in your network can see you or connect with you. Um, but uh, yeah, connections and growing your network is part of what LinkedIn is all about. So as a kind of a starter, you should aim to try and get about 50 connections. Um, when you're making connections, try and make sure that there is something genuine to connect between you and the other person, um, or you could run the risk of being reported for spamming if you're just going through and clicking connect, connect, connect on random strangers. Um, again, it's not competition. You're not trying to get the most followers out of everyone. Um, but on average, um, 300 to 500 connections um, it's kind of what you'll naturally grow to or should aim for to make it still something that you can um, recognize the people and remember who they are versus say if you had something like 3000 um, you probably wouldn't be able to remember and handle any kind of uh, sense of connectivity with that many people. We like to recommend that you think about connecting with people to help you grow kind of outside the areas that you've been in. So you could maybe first connect with people who really advocate you, close personal and trusted connections, maybe friends, families, um, maybe you've got uh, kind of a friend of your, your parents or carer that uh, has a good job and you can connect with them, or people you've worked with in community groups or met through work. Um, or even people like old uh, tutors or teachers. Again, they won't necessarily accept your connection, but if you think uh, that's kind of safe and trusted, then you know, reach out to them and ask for a connection. You also might want to get some strategic connections. So that's people who can help connect you with the right people. So uh, maybe your uh, dad knows someone who works in a tech company and you can who kind of knows you from when he's been around some days uh, you can make a connection with him and that could actually help you then connect further with people he knows and that's how your network kind of fans out and grows with other people you might also want to really target someone who you think is a subject matter expert on something so this can be a stranger as with any social network, you know, remember how to stay safe online. Um, you want to 
should be able to see someone from their profile, get a good sense of if um, they're kind of a real person working for a real company quite easily. Um, you might find something that's made you have a connection already, like maybe you went to the same school or you're from the same area and you can do an introductory message to say, I'd really like to connect with you. I'm starting out in my career and I want someone I can talk to to give me good advice on the field that I'm interested in. Actually, it turns out that 80% of any job positions and hirings are filled through someone getting referred. So uh, that's why it's important to grow who you know as well as what you know. The profile is going to be five times more likely to be viewed if you join interactive in groups on LinkedIn. And these are kind of various forums that you can join um, and participate in to talk to people about a similar field, maybe a certain industry or um, a certain technology or even kind of specific skills. You can find groups for everything on LinkedIn and participate in them. Again, that will help you make connections with people that are outside of that kind of your school silo. So you now know everything uh, that you need to do to rank that all star profile. So I'll just give you a quick recap. You need to put in your industry and location. You should put in your current position of where you're working with a description. And if you currently haven't got a job, you can actually flag that up now on LinkedIn and say that you're, you're open to offers and you're, you're looking for a career. If you've got that job history, you have at least two previous positions. You don't have to put every job you have. Once you've got a couple of, um, kind of jobs in the industry you actually want to work in, you might think right now's the time to remove that supermarket job from my LinkedIn profile because it's not adding anything uh, to my profile and I've kind of moved on from there. But people do like to see a bit of a job history, see the path that you've taken to. So if you've got a few positions you can list, then put them on there. Uh, next, put in your education, uh, include some detail there about uh, kind of your good grades that you got or the things that you really enjoyed or volunteered to do while you were there. List five or more skills that you have and get people to endorse them. Aim to get around 50 plus connections so that you start to get those uh, different ripples of connections going through your network. Anyone that you connect directly is known as your kind of a first connection. But if it's uh, kind of like Facebook has that friend of a friend concept, if someone I'm connected with is then connected on to someone else, that would be a second connection to me. So because we've got that person in common, we might be able to kind of grow our network and talk to each other or get some opportunity from that. And last but not least is make sure you have a good profile photo. And if you put all of that together, your profile will be likely to be viewed more than 40 times than someone who hasn't done any of that. So quite simple, easy stuff to do um, that actually gives you some real value and makes it worth doing it. So now you've got that all star profile, what's next? Well, I'm going to tell you uh, just a few quick tips on how to grow your network. How do you nurture it to make sure you're getting ma maximum value out of the LinkedIn platform? What are the kind of things you can do to show off your personal brand and to help you get that dream job? So if I go on LinkedIn, I like to kind of think in thirds. I might update my feed. I'll look at some industry news or something I'm personally interested in. And then I might look at targeting specific connections or looking at what career opportunities are out there. I'll give you a bit more details on each of those steps so you're familiar with them. So updating your feed is the simplest thing you can do on LinkedIn. Um, you can do it through the website, uh, but the LinkedIn app's also a really good uh, place to go and post from and do everything that you can do on the website basically through the app as well. When you start a post, you can choose the audience and you can say uh, if you've got a Twitter account, it will automatically <coughs> repost it to there. Um, or you can make it visible to just your connections rather than anyone who's on LinkedIn. Uh, just like any other social network, you can use hashtags, you can post website links, um, you can share a photo or a video or even upload a document. Um, you can also do some other interesting things like create a poll, um, 
ask for an expert to come and help you or celebrate an occasion as well. If you want to write something a bit more, there's this concept of writing an article and publishing it on LinkedIn. So publishing articles is uh, just like having your own blog, but maybe you don't want to have the hassle of managing a blog, or you can use LinkedIn for that purpose as well. And uh, you can really quickly and easily create um, good profiles that let you, um, good, sorry, headlines rather, that mean that you can really showcase the kind of uh, work that you are really good at. You can write articles to give those insights and show your experience and it helps build influence and show that you're the kind of person that likes to, to think about stuff in detail. You could even share any essays that you've done or any research you've done on there. The more kind of public and open you are about your skills, then the more likely you are to um, intrigue someone and get some uh, extra connections and extra opportunities through that. So once you've posted something, what does that actually look like? So you can see here, this is something that I posted. Um, I've got 13 reactions, so people have kind of liked that post. I've also got a good few comments on it as well. So I can reply to those comments or react to them, and help keep that conversation going. Um, sometimes it might be uh, from a complete random stranger if it's a public post, or it might be from someone working um, somewhere like really interesting, somewhere that you want to work. And you can actually click um, to get some insights on who has viewed that profile. So I can see on this post that I did, they had uh, the kind of companies that people work for that looked on it. I had 15 people from Microsoft, 13 from Visual, I had four from people who worked at Costa Coffee. Um, I can see that the kind of people who read it, uh, what job roles they had and the locations they were into. So it helps me to know that the, the posts that I'm doing are reaching the right kind of audience. I want to track, uh, I want to kind of react to the stuff and engage with me and might help me with my career. As well as just posting um, information, um, you can also find interesting news on the industry you're working in so that you can then share that on or comment on it. Um, and you can also look up things that are kind of personally interesting to you that might not necessarily be something you want your career to focus on, but are still interesting and help to kind of enrich um, you and the kind of things that you do. Um, LinkedIn actually has its own kind of news section, uh, which is on the right hand side of the home page. And that uh, the headlines that it shows you there should um, be linked to a bit about the pro your profile, be more relevant to you to show the kind of things that you would usually post on yourself. So it's, it's kind of catered uh, for your interest there. But the best way that I find is to just look through my news feed and see what other people are sharing, my other connections, the kind of news they've been interested in. Um, if they've used a hashtag in a post, um, then you can click on that and follow the hashtag, um, or you can search for hashtags just in the search bar to find uh, any kind of specific topics that you really want to kind of know about and build up all the information, um, especially useful if you're starting something new in your job and you're not kind of sure, uh, you haven't had any experience of it, by looking at those kind of news and other people's posts and personal interests, it can really help you uh, to get a better understanding of things. Um, any people that you follow or groups or companies or schools show up as interests on your profile. So anytime you click that follow button, um, they will actually kind of show up publicly on your profile. So that's actually quite interesting for a recruiter to see or a hiring manager in a company because they can see the kind of things you're interested in um, and see if they kind of align to the kind of person they think would be good in that role. So finally, it's uh, actually doing a bit of active targeting to try and grow your network and really give your career opportunities uh, a good boost. So if you click on the My Network tab, LinkedIn will make some recommendations for you. So it will suggest people that you might know um, through work or through schools or through similar roles in industries 
um, people that would be kind of worth connecting with you. Again, think about those three kind of categories of people who's going to be an advocate for you, who's going to be a strategic contact to help connect you to the right people, or who's going to be that subject matter expert that can give you advice on a particular field. It's a great way to keep in touch with people as you move from school and college and different jobs. Um, it's hard to stay in touch sometimes um, with people that you work with, but by connecting with them on LinkedIn, it means that uh, you can still kind of have that informal uh, insight into how people are getting on and who knows where they might end up in the future and they could possibly help you um, if they've gone on a similar path. The other things it shows on your network page are recommendations. Uh, so influencers, they're people to follow, um, like really big names in industry that you can look off, look at and see kind of what they get up to. Also suggests events, companies and groups and newsletters that you can sign up to as well. You'll find when you start to use LinkedIn or you kind of do a lot of updates, you'll get recruiters trying to get in touch with you. So don't feel pressure to accept a message from a recruiter or reply to it if you're not interested you just politely decline or ignore them if you don't know who they are um, if you have an accurate and honest profile then the targeting that some recruiters might do should actually be valid and you should get relevant people contacting you um, so again if you think oh well, that was really interesting what that person said but i'm quite happy with where i'm working now you know you can just politely decline that and say thanks i'm not i'm not looking at the moment um but keep me in mind for further opportunities or you can just ignore it another way to to find people um and really help kind of with that who you know approach is to look at your alumni so alumni is just a fancy word for people you went to school or college or uni with um and what you can do if you go to that school's page or uni page is click on the alumni tab and you can start to filter down everyone on LinkedIn who's listed that education establishment on their profile. Uh, you can see where they live, where they're working now. Um, you can see exactly what they've studied or what they say they're skilled at. And that then filters down those people. Um, so you've got a small list of something that's really relevant to the kind of thing you want to do. And then when you do that uh, request to connect with them, you can say, oh, I found you because we both went to the same college um, and we're in the same area. And I really like the look of uh, your profile and the kind of things you've done in your career. Um, I'd really like to connect with you to, to help me uh, boost my own career and get some advice from you or any ideas. So by just having that connection of being at the same place of education, um, you'll be surprised at how many people are kind of happy to help those who have followed a similar path to themselves. Another way to target specific connections or career opportunities is to um, actually look at the company pages of places that you'd like to work for. So when you go to a company work page, so Microsoft's page gives you a good overview about what the company is, where their offices are, how many employees they've got, or even if you know anyone already that work there. You can also uh, see on a lot of company profile pages this new life section. So this life section is it's less of the facts and more about the culture or the benefits or what kind of day to day life is like working in a company. You can see on the Google one, they've actually got a section specifically for students where it's telling them about how maybe their graduate programs work or how you could apply for an internship there, the kind of roles that students have when they first start work at Google. Um, and also you can do specific searches for that company and the jobs that they have. Um, so that's really useful if you think, oh, I know that one day I'd like to work there. No, I haven't got quite the experience yet. You can have a look at the kind of jobs that they post what skills they look for um, so that you know the areas that you need to develop yourself in. If you're just looking for, uh, if you're not worried about a particular company, then you can use the jobs page to look across 
um, all of the job adverts that are out there on LinkedIn. You can search by um, a job title or a skill or a specific company and the area that you'd like to work in. You can then save that as an alert. So if any future jobs come up with those uh, criteria, then you'll get an email or a notification in the app to help you uh, kind of quickly respond and react to it. But there's a few other tools on there that are really useful too. Uh, for example, they have skills assessments, whereas you might not really have a have done an exam or a course to prove that you've had a certain skill. Say you're really good at HTML coding, but you've never done anything. It's just done through hobbies rather than anything um, kind of official. You can do skills assessments on LinkedIn and it's just a free uh, kind of quiz that will really highlight that you do have those skills that you say you're having. And um, if you're in the kind of top 30 percent of people with those skills, it will highlight that to recruiters when they're looking at your profile. There's also a resume or a CV builder that takes your all that good information you've got on LinkedIn and just lets you export it as a PDF. And it will also give you some tips about how you can maybe improve it for a specific job role, um, certain keywords you might want to put in or things you might want to highlight. And that's a real time saving feature for me. I don't have to worry about kind of where I saved the last Word document and then go back and update that if I'm starting a new job years later. I've got it all up to date and all fresh on my LinkedIn profile. So starting from there is a really good point. And the last thing I just wanted to point out on the job tools is the interview prep section. Uh, so this is quite hidden away, but it's well worth looking at because if you haven't got much experience with interviews, this helps you to understand the kind of questions you might get asked and the kind of things you can do kind of before, during and after an interview um, to make it go as smoothly as possible. So that's all we've got time for today. Um, as the slide says, there's over 700 million others out there waiting to connect. Um, if you want more information that's specific around kind of starting with LinkedIn, starting your career, then go to university.linkedin.com. That's got a really good section for students with uh, lots of guides and tips uh, that cover a lot of what I've said today and other things in a lot more detail. Um, so after you uh, have finished watching this, hopefully you've been inspired to go and create or revamp your profile and start to make connections uh, that really matter to you and help open up uh, your opportunities for your professional life. Thank you.